talk about the next one, which is um, a format string. And we actually did this during the lecture, but I'll just go over it uh, simply here. So this one here is 204. So if I clear and do an ls, there's the project with so some cat pd204.c. All right. And so uh, there it is, and I, I guess I'll, uh, I'll do it live. I think we did it in a slightly different format in the lecture. So here we have a program that reads a um, string in the command line argument, and then it copies it into a variable called buff, and it prints it with no um, format string. I don't know why I even bothered with the buffer here. I'm not planning to overflow it. But anyway, it prints whatever comes in without a format string. So if you run it, ed, and you give it a, a one, it prints one. If you give it a percent x, it prints a random value from the stack. If you give it um, a, 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 dot percent x, dot percent x, x, dot percent x, then you see the A's here show up there as 4141. So now you can control values uh, on the stack. Uh, now you can control, yeah, you control a, a number on the stack. So um, now uh, there's just a few steps to do here, which we've done in lecture. I don't think I'll do them again. You find a real, to find, first you have to find a RAND location to write to, and you do that by disassembling main. Now first you look at the source code. And you see here is where the format string attack is going to happen. This is where I'm going to be able to write to memory. And you see down here, I call the exit routine. And I don't use it anywhere else. So I can change, if I can change the pointer to the exit routine, I can take over the box when it hits the exit command. And so you use objump minus r to see the relocation records. And that will show you where exit is. So this is the address of exit, 0804A014. So if I can write an address there, that will end up in the instruction pointer. So now you just have to, um, this is the attack that will put it there. You put in those four bytes, and then percent %x, percent %x, percent %x, percent %n. This is the fourth thing printed. That's going to be this value, and n is going to write to that location. So when you write to that location in the debugger, you will then crash, and you will end up with a 00001B in that location, which is the pointer to the exit routine. And now you just have to write Python code that will write four times to write each byte one by one. And then after a couple of uh, trial and error, you have these numbers where you have to be off by 29 and such. You have to carefully adjust it to write these four bytes in a row and put in a targeted value of A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D, and check to make sure that works in the debugger. And then um, this has dummy shell code in it. So I put in an op sled of 190s, and then I put in 250 cc's so I can see where it is on the stack. So now you put that in put in a breakpoint, and when you run it, you can go to the stack, just like we just did for the other one, and find the NOP sled, and find an address to jump to. And now you know what address you want to put in. So you put in that address, FFFFD11C on my machine, is an address that hits, um, it's what hit on my machine. It doesn't match that picture, but that's what worked for me. All right, and uh, that's the point. So then now you'll eventually be able to uh, now you can inject code and run something. Now you have to get rid of the bad characters. So you have to test for them. I guess the null, tab, line feed, carriage return, and space were all bad. And here, um, I wrote a program that would inject all 256 possible bytes, except for those five that I suspected were bad. And when you inject them and look in the debugger, you can see that all of them do. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and on it goes. Here's E7, F7, it goes right up to FF. So all those characters got in. So you only have to remove those five bad characters. You can use all the rest, five bad bytes. And so this is the Metasploit command that does it. 
It makes a shell bind TCP. It doesn't use any of those five bad characters. And here's another one of those advanced options I found was necessary. Prepend fork is true, so it won't crash on me the way the other one I did tonight was crashing. You have to play with these options till you find one that'll work on your system. And uh, so that's the exploit. And so all you have to do is fill that in and run it, and then you'll be able to get a listing shell where you can control it with, uh, it'll be listening, and then you can control it with a, a netcat. So that's the format string that we talked about before. And um, in the same spirit,